Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my friends here back here at the Legends of the Game Softball, I welcome you back. I have a special treat today. Um, you guys, you guys have to know this. This is the the Jackie Robinson of softball, Billy Harris. Billy Harris, I am so excited that you're on the show today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. And you're in Arizona right now. Yes, yes. I wanted yes, to make a little trip. Yes, I wanted to start off talking about your trip. You're going to Africa for nine months? Yes, to a year. Wow. So you, when we talked earlier before um, we started the show, back in the 70s, did you say? You guys went to go play in Africa? In South and, Africa, yes. In South Africa, and you weren't allowed in? Unless they gave you white status? Well, they told me I would have to go in as a... Um, I believe you said honorary. Yes, yes. And that's... Nothing else changed, but those words were the only things. Uh, an honorary uh, white status. An honorary white, yes. So, Isn't that amazing? I mean, doesn't that blow you away? Yes, it does, but there was nothing I could do about it. The team wanted to go, I wanted to go, so they found the way to say okay by making me an honorary white for two or three weeks. And then when I started to come back, um, I was delayed for about three hours. And I never did find out why they didn't let me come with the team because we were all dressed alike. Of course, I was a little different in color, but everything else was the same. Your jersey was the same, yeah. Yeah. Was that with the Arizona Ramblers? What team was that no, with? That was with the Sun City Saints. Okay. So yeah. that I just I opened up with that story because when you told me that story, it just blows me away. It just blows me away. I don't <laughs> understand it. <laughs> but your mother, your mother was a big force in your life when it came to race relations. Oh, yes, yes. See, um, she, my mother and her sister had to go to a store, and her sister was looked like she was pure white, really? but she was black. My mother was very light-skinned, but in order to go in the store, in order to get things, her sister had to make my mother, who was her younger sister, uh, part of her... Uh, home as as if she were her maid or something. What? Yes. So there were many places that uh, my mother's sister uh, pretended that she was white because she looked so. Wow, that's that's shameful. Yes. Um, well, let's let, let's take the race relations into softball, though. I know you had said that your support from your teammates was if, if the restaurant wouldn't serve you, your team the restaurant, the restaurant. Yeah, if the restaurant wouldn't serve me, then uh, the team would just get up and leave after finding out that the food was ready. And uh, they would just, the team would, the coach would just say, well, let's go. And then we'd go to another restaurant, but before we went in, he would say, do you serve? colored people or black people in here and they say yes so we'd go in and we'd eat well i mean i i'm proud of them i'm yes. proud of them but I, I it's still shameful to me um so <clears throat> let me let me go back to your childhood tell me your story what what turned you on to softball when I was 13 i was getting ready to leave texas to come see my father and my mother said well, why don't you wait? Maybe the whole family can go out. And so my mother contacted my father and uh, he said, yes, bring the whole family. And there were uh, three, three boys and myself. And I was the youngest at the time. And I got to Tucson and I saw this magazine with the PBSW Ramblers and the A1 Queens. Uh, and so, you know, in the magazine. And I thought, my goodness, that looks really nice. Uh, 
and they were ball players. And I had been throwing rocks and balls and cans and kicking and that sort of thing in Texas. And so this was something that um, I wanted to do. But then when I went to junior high school, uh, we didn't have softball there, but my teacher always tried to make room for teams so we could play some type of game. And from that, uh, I was seen by uh, other another team called the Sunshine Girls, and they asked me to to join their team, and so so I did, and uh, we played and we won several uh, state championships. And one thing led to another when I went to play with the Ramblers, but uh, it's I, I've had I've had some you know times that. Uh, weren't too pleasant, but they were okay. Well, you played, I mean, your records were amazing. Tell me what pitch did you like to throw? By the way, Billy Harris is a left-handed pitcher. What was your favorite pitch? A drop was about the best pitch I had because it was something that was natural. I was more of a spot pitcher than I could if the glove was word was, I'd hit the glove, you know, if it was up or down. I had many pitches, but I didn't know what they were. So, uh, but a drop, I you think- hit the, was, You hit the target. I hit the target and uh, Dottie and called the hard. And, uh, You threw hard, you were a fast, you threw fast. Uh, when I went to play in high school, they told me I couldn't play in high school because I threw the ball too hard. But no one ever took time to help me. So I never did play in school anymore after that. And um, when I was seen by one of the team members at a state tournament, the Ramblers would uh, send for me from Tucson and I'd catch the bus and, and come to Phoenix and we'd stop in Casa Grande and, uh, but I couldn't eat at the restaurant. So I'd have to go in the kitchen to eat, if the table was full, then I'd have to wait. But then by that time, it was time for the bus to start again. So, but we had a black cook and I got a chance to eat pretty good. So, but I couldn't eat outside in the restaurant. I don't even know, I mean, how to, I just wanna say, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> I think that's disgusting. Um, so talk to me about your, best friend, Dottie Wilkinson. There's well, a story that you two talk every day at 8.30 in the morning. Yes, yes. And uh, depending on what time it is now, um, <laughs> I'll probably miss a call every, uh, today. But uh, quarter to eight at your time. What? Oh, I'm you calling her about eight. eight. Oh, do you? Yeah, then you'll probably be late today. Yes, that's all right. Uh, but I don't see you anymore. I apparently hit something. I see you. Well, let's see then. I don't know what happened. I'll have to call Bridget. Yeah. Yes. So tell me, where did you play with Daddy? Where did I what? Where did you play with Daddy? What team? Oh, the PBS of the Ramblers. The Ramblers. Yes. Uh-huh. And wasn't and she your catcher? Yes, she just turned 99 uh, the 9th of this month. I know. Wow. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Uh huh. And when you go to Arizona, you're going to go over there and see, you know, talk to her before you leave, I hope. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. So, how um, you guys have been friends for, I forgot the number, how long? Oh, since 1950. Uh, 48, something like that. Who was your best competitor? Um, I think it was Orange Lionettes. Did you ever play the breakout? Well, I played Joan Joyce a lot, yes. <laughs> Joan talks about you a lot. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, so the breakouts and the and, uh, Orange Lionettes were very awesome teams. Yes, very good. Are. 
Yes, they were. Did you play against Bertha Tickey? Yes, I knew Bertha. She was a sweetheart to me. <laughs> you know, she reminds me of Patsy Klein. She looks like oh. Patsy Klein with, with light hair. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. She, so, Bertha was wonderful. I'm cutting out on your face, Billy. Bring your, yeah, bring your phone down. There you go. Do you, oh, okay. uh, what, what's your favorite story about Bertha or Sis Bates or Joan Joyce or any of them? Oh, they, they were just wonderful people. They treated me so well and they were just kind to me. Uh, I remember saying to Joan that I wanted to, uh, to play catch with her. And so we were setting up for a tournament or something. And uh, she said, well, Billy, I'll tell you what pictures I'm going to throw. I said, well, I'm glad you can tell me what pictures you're going to throw because I couldn't tell you which one I was going to throw. <laughs> Yeah, but you were so successful. Didn't you have like 70 uh, no hitters or something like that? Yeah, but the other pitchers had so much more going for them. It was, uh, Joan probably had that many uh, perfect games. <laughs> well, Joan was, Joan was outstanding, but Joan's the one that turned me on to you. She said you oh. were, yeah, Joan was the one that was, you know, you were one of her favorite players. Well, like I said, she, they all treated me so well. It was really wonderful. Well, you're, I saw a, a news program about a birthday of what, a couple of years ago, and you were still throwing and hitting and running the bases? Oh, oh it was my birthday 85th party? birthday. Yeah. Yes. My birthday, you're 86? I'm 87 now. I know. That's, sorry, I had a little tickle in my throat. So tell me about Africa. Why are you going back? I wanted to go uh, several several years ago, and I kept saying that oh, no, that's too much. And I kept thinking about it. And I was talking to my friend Bridget, and and I said, well, once once I get all my ducks in a row, uh, maybe that's what what it'll be. And one day I just walked in the house and I said. Hey, how would you like to go to Africa? She said, what? <laughs> <laughs> she said, are you serious? I said, yeah, I'm serious because it's something I've wanted to do for a while and I've been thinking about it. And no sooner said than done, uh, and we started planning on it. And so this is what- but Nine the, months to a year, that's a long time. Yeah, that is, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I can't think of a better time to do it than now. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's very true. So who so, else do you keep in touch with besides Dottie? Uh, most of our teammates are gone. Um, I keep in touch with some of the members of the old, I mean, the younger team, like the, the Sun City Saints. But, but most of my... Uh, Rambler teammates uh, are gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So who but was the, your, yeah, so you like Joan Joyce and who, who else did you like to play against? All of the teams that we played against were, were very, very good. And the team members were very kind. Uh, I had very little problems with uh, any of the teams that we played against. Well, that makes me happy because softball family needs to stick together. Yes. And women need to support other women. Hmm? Women need to support other women. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I believe in the uh, sports world. Uh, I think they do. Yeah. Joan Joyce <laughs> said the reason why we don't have a professional team um, that is like, like Major League Baseball is because women don't support other women. That's possible because it isn't happening. So something has to be the reason. It is. I, 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 believe, yes. that. I believe that completely. So, so. Um, I usually have a player from today ask a question of a legend like yourself. And Katie Thatcher from the Quad City Heartland Havoc would like to know what you would tell her today. So she just injured her knee and she has to rehab her knee. What would you tell her today 
to get her through that sort of injury. Did you ever have an injury that you had to overcome? I n never had an injury. I did have one one injury when I was playing. I had a sprained ankle, um, but I've had both knees uh, replaced. So then you know her feeling, yeah. Yes, yes, and rehab is so important, and it hurts, but it's worth it. So my my doctor told me to take my pain medicine a half hour before your uh, therapy because it will help ease the pain that you have to go through if you're going to do a good job on, on your rehabilitation. Right. And then you continue to exercise on your own as much as possible and knowing that you're going to go through some pain because uh, that's, that's what that's the way it is. Yeah. Yes. She's uh, 15 and she tore her uh, she tore her meniscus. Pretty bad tear. I, yeah. I know that feeling well. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty bad tear. So mm -hmm. tell me, what do you, um, who do you, I'm trying to think of uh, the question I had in my brain. Where did it go? What are you going to do while you're in Africa? I'm just going to kind of explore. I'm kind of, I'm going to explore just to, I just want to go from place to place for a while. Uh, after, after I finish the uh, quarantine and oh, that's right. do yeah. nothing, just enjoy the water, the ocean, the beach, and uh, socialize with the people a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. A little. What do, you, mm -hmm. what do you think about your nickname? You're the Jackie Robinson of softball. What do you think about that? Well, I thought it was pretty neat because um, they they had me uh, sing the anthem at one of his openings in the Diamondbacks, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And You're someone good. came up with that name, uh, Jack, the Jackie Robinson, because when he first started playing, I can remember... Uh, how much I enjoyed watching him play or listening to him play on the on the uh, radio, right? And how he stole home plate and and I did that a couple of times myself playing softball. <laughs> so you were put in the Hall of Fame in the '90s, in the late '90s, right? Was that a goal of yours? Uh, Eighty eighty-two. Uh, <laughs> was the uh, 79 I think was the first one that I was inducted into yeah the first one uh, yeah and then there were about three others that I was inducted into as far as um, where I played in Tucson and uh, someone inducted me into the slow pitch hall of fame and the Arizona Hall of Fame and then the National Hall of Fame. So I've been several and um, I wish I could see you, but I, I don't know what to do with this. I'm just looking at a blank screen. I don't, I can't see from your side, but I can see you. I don't know where oh, Bridget went. I, I don't know where Bridget went. <laughs> you, um, was that a goal of yours to be a Hall of Famer? No, no, because even when I first started playing, they said, now we're not gonna let you read any papers that could make you have a big head. So I never read anything about myself uh, in the papers or I just, it never bothered me. All I wanted to do was just play softball. So. So you loved the game, did you? But being, it was an honor to be inducted into the National Hall of Fame, though. But as far as working toward that, no. Mm -mm. I just wanted to play softball and do the best I could. Well, do you believe that you're a Hall of Famer now? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Well, you definitely deserve to be there. Uh, I kind of feel like I deserve to be there. I think you do. One well, thousand yeah. percent, think you do. What would yeah. you tell these kids these days that just 
that maybe feel a little entitled because I love your pure heart. You just love to play. Yes, if you don't like to play, it just doesn't seem to have any, you shouldn't even be out on the field. Right. You know, if you, if you don't, don't play for someone, play for, because you want to play. You know, do the best you can for what whatever you're doing. And um, it, it, it'll make, it'll work out for you. Right. But you've got to work hard. You work do hard, it. that's what it's all about. So do it because you love it. Yes, absolutely. So did you, what else did you struggle with? Did you struggle with, um, were you hard on yourself? Did you have, no struggle? <laughs> did I have trouble? Struggles, like did you, what was your struggles in life? In playing ball? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, the, the only thing that really probably upset me more than anything was the fact that I didn't have the opportunity to play uh, several years before I took over the team because <clears throat> other, other ball players would come in and I would end up sitting on the bench. Oh. You know, other, other pitchers would come in and I'd end up sitting on the bench. Uh, and that happened for about four years. That was the only thing that uh, I think I could, would have been a much better ball player had I had the opportunity to to play uh, and get the experience uh, as the other ball players did. Right. But you're a Hall of Famer. Yes, I worked and worked and worked and. Thankfully, uh, the honor came. Your perseverance is, is what, you know, I think your legacy is. What do you think your legacy is? I, I, I never thought about it because they were, I was asked that question just the other day. And I said, just to have been and recognized for what I did and hope that it wasn't something that they think was just given to me because I was the first black being inducted into a, a Hall of Fame or something like that. Just let me be the person that I, I am and hope that I put whatever I did uh, to, to good use. Well, I think what you did, you earned, and nothing was given to you. I would say that, right? I, I don't think anything was given to me. I think I earned it. Was given to you. You earned that stuff. So what do you think about all the attention you've been getting here lately? I think it's wonderful. It's nice. It's, uh, it's, it's what they call a nice going away present. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I want, and I want you to have a, the best time in Africa, and I want you to share your pictures with me. You said you would. Yes. We're friends on Facebook now. Yes, all right. All right, you promised me you would stay in touch. Yes, that, that would be wonderful. On the uh, WhatsApp, we can see each other, and uh, it's... You have to add me. See, I'd have to add you to WhatsApp? Well, yeah, because I looked for you the other day. You're not on there yet. Well, I'm on there. It's just that I have problems with it. And when I can get Bridget to help me with it, uh, sh she does. But the other day I used WhatsApp and I lost the app. So I'll, I'll, we'll have to do something about that. We will. We will. Mm -hmm. You told me to keep in touch. I'm going to keep in touch. I want to see All you. Right. I want to watch your trip. Billy, thank, thank you. you so much for being on my show. I am I, so appreciative and I bow down in respect for you. Without Billy Harris, we don't have softball the way it is today. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate you asking me to be on your program.